Okay, this is the third or fourth time I'm trying to uh, make a video here. It keeps cutting off. They they got my camera set where it it uh, the duration of maybe two or three minutes before it cuts off. So I'm gonna try to see how this works. But again, I'll state I'm in my fifty five dollars a night room. Well, I don't have a key, and I know it's illegal, because if you're in a room, you're supposed to have a key to your room, so you can go in and out as you please. Also, like that other uh, uh, motel room in, in Tucson, Arizona, very few channels on the TV. No radio. No clock. Um, well, now, I was trying to do the live stream. You had to excuse my junk, but I want to show you some things here. I just got to eat my dinner. But uh, every time I try to make uh, a video about uh, GoFundMe, they uh, cut me off that GoFundMe account. Now, on Facebook, when I tried to make the video about how that GoFundMe account, I wasn't getting any uh, donations, Facebook shut me down so uh, again that's why they were messing with the live stream because they don't want people to know that if they that if they've been don donating money to me that I'm not getting it but uh, I, that video I loaded about um, uh, the officers that arrested me well as you can see I was clearly angry because uh they just keep kept taking my things as i said my boxes didn't arrive in dallas but my tent and my shopping cart and my camping chair did and when i got ready to get on the bus those items were gone also um i made a video previously about uh, being, being aware of the police getting in their vehicles with, uh, that, uh, how they were killing people in, in that back seat, how they had those gas chambers in, the, uh, officer, officers, uh, uh, police cars. Well, those officers that you saw on that video, when they arrested me, they took me and put me in their patrol car. And as soon as I got in there, I noticed that the petition was the same as the one I saw in New Orleans. Where, um, there was no way that, uh, you could speak to the officers. It was sealed so they can gas you in the back seat. Now, uh, when I got in the uh, car, I saw that there was blood and other, uh, stuff on that petition. There's no way you can talk through that petition because there's no air holes. And it has rubber around it where it's sealed. So if they gas you, that the gas doesn't go to the front of the uh, police officer's vehicle. Now, I also noticed in the back that they had um, a little thing. I don't know. I think it was where they released the gas from. It was six holes on each side, six chambers on each side. And... Uh, when I kept looking at it, those officers, the ones that on the video, they knew something was up because I recognized that that um, petition was how they use the gas people. So one officer said to the other one, this look like it's a uh, setup because she knows something about that uh, petition in the back seat. But um, as I said, there were, that, that was blood and other, uh, stuff on those petitions. But I'm not gonna go, uh, do all of that. But I want to tell you exactly what they did. Now, those officers that arrested me, um, they went through my purse. They, uh, took my, the items that I had, which I still don't have today. And, uh, they mess up with my head again, but I'll, I'll, I'll struggle my way through this. 
But um, they searched me. They had a, a female officer come, and she searched me. And she kept touching me in my private parts. Now, once she touched me down there, when she did it again, I said, you don't have to keep touching me at my private parts. Now, once they put me in the paddy wagon, we got to the uh, Dallas Correctional Center. They searched me again once I went in the building. Now, said I've already been searched once. Then, she said, well, you better get used to this because you're going to be searched plenty of times. I said, well, how many times do you do a search? We do it plenty of times. So, that officer, when I walked in, searched me. Now, I've been searched uh, outside the car. I've been searched when I walked in. I walked up to the desk. They searched me again. Now, there's three times they done searched me and kept touching my private part. Then, two other officers came up, and they were going to take me in this uh little room and do a cavity search, which is illegal. It's against federal law to do a cavity search, to strip search you. And once I told those officers that, they did the regular search, but they touched me in my private part again. Then, um, I was fingerprinted a total of four times. I was fingerprinted four times. I was searched by 12 different people. 12, you understand what I'm saying? 12 different people. Now, uh, when I refused to answer any medical questions, which they say I didn't have not the right to do, but they tell you you have the right to remain silent. But when I like, exercised my right to remain silent, uh, they said that I was uh, suicidal. So they put me, uh, they said they were going to put me uh, in a suicide tank, be watched for suicide. Now, uh, she told me when they took me to the back that I had to uh, take off my clothes or have the strings cut off. Now, let me show you something. This jacket that I had on. This jacket. The only string that's on this jacket is on my hood. And it's not a string. It's just the little rubber. The little... Oh, they took it out. The little um, elastic that holds it together with a button. So they cut my little elastic. You can't hang yourself with the elastic you're fastening the hood up. They cut my um, elastic off my hood. My pants. They said these were suicide things. Now, I want you to notice my pants. This, the string comes from this part to about there. So they cut the string, which is about this long, that long, on both sides. Now, how could you hang yourself with a string that that's long? So they cut the strings off of both my side of the pants. Now, this is torn up. This is from the last search where they held me down, tore my pants up, strip searched me, and dragged me across, even though I'm handcuffed, and laying on my stomach, they dragged me across that back room floor. Now, this is about six officers who tore my pants and holding me, dragging me, and tearing my clothes off me. Now, um, since they said that my strings had to be cut since I wouldn't put on one of those gowns, they still wind up taking these clothes anyway. So, if you're going to take them, why would you cut my strings off? Why would you cut my items off if you were going to make me get out, take off the clothes anyway? So, um, they fingerprinted me four times. They strip searched me 12 people five times. They searched me five times. And like I said, they just kept touching my private part, and I got truly angry. Um, then three of them, in the beginning, one of them, one of the male officers took me, all three of them holding me and slammed me. And when you go into the side of the, the um, holding area, there's a glass partition. He slammed my head into that partition and then threw me in that room 
on my head. Now, he do me hard enough where he thought that he could kill me or hurt me bad enough where I would need some kind of hospitalization. But again, God has me. And I got back up off the floor where he was surprised as hard as he threw my head against that concrete. Now, this is why I got all this laid out. They took my money, didn't want to give me a receipt for my money. But they wind up giving me a receipt for the $371 I had. Now, again, they mess up my head with, you know, that MP Ultra um, devices that they use. Now, um, once... Um, they put me in that uh, infirmary, I think that's what they call it. They took me to a, uh, what it says here, uh, oh, this is what you see too. The officer who taken my property, who took my property, guess what his name is? Guess what he signed as? P. Jones, my name. The officer who took my property named it's P. Jones, too, I guess. Now, they took me to this infirmary, supposed to be a suicide ward, where, I, as I said, I've been there since the 7th, and I only got out yesterday, it was the 22nd. They did not let me go before a judge, and so I started writing petitions. They would not allow me to have a telephone call. So, on the 19th of this month, I signed these inmate grievance complaint forms. I filed a grievance complaint form on the 19th with Officer Coulter. And on the 20th, the next morning, they came about 9 o'clock and took me, said I was going to court. Now, I get to this Mark uh, jailhouse setting where they at, and it, uh, Public defender comes out and tells me that uh, they want to give me time served. No, I, I was going to take time served because time served means that I'm pleading guilty to a crime. I told him I wanted to be, go before the judge and fight this case because there's no way I should be charged with criminal trespass. If I'm at the Greyhound Station, they've taken my things and all I want to do is call cooperation from their phone. Because see, when I use my phone to call corp, they don't answer. And also, the number that I tried to call Corp is guess where? Here in Dallas. The same 214 number. So no matter what city I'm in, when I call Corp, it's always in the city that I'm at. And again, it's those same people who answer the booth phone, who answers uh, uh, AT&T phones, who answers all the places that I call these same a city from the Philippines. They always answer the phone. So, um, yesterday when I called, when I got out, guess who answered again at Greyhound Corp? Another one of them. Same people I've been talking to no matter where I call. Same people, same voices. Now, um, I have to slow down because every time they play in my head, they don't want to me, uh, remember what, I want to, what I'm going to say. But, um, uh, these, these, um, uh, things, once I found a grievance, like I said, you have to forgive me because I'm trying to struggle through this. Once I found a grievance, uh, on the 19th, on the 20th, they took me, said I was going to court. The uh, public defender who was supposed to have been assigned to me, Told me that since I was going to fight the case, he was going to go in there, go before the judge and tell him I wanted a court date continuous. And he'll come back and let me know what the court date is. He never came back. So when I asked the bailiff uh, about my court date, again, they don't know when I have a court date. And he said the lawyer was gone. The public defender was gone. Now, how could you be gone? I just got to be talking to you and you haven't come back out and told me a court date. But you're gone. And nobody knows again what my court date is. But I told the bailiff, I should have went before a judge. I should have seen the judge. And I did not. 
So I've been writing grievances since I went back. Now, um, I received this. I wrote a grievance uh, on the 20th. 20, and then yesterday they give me this. This is from supposed to have been my public defender. Now notice the date. November the 13th. November the 13th. Now, you didn't take me to court till the 20th. So why didn't I get this letter from the public defender's office on the 14th? Since it was mailed to me. Okay. Now yesterday when they let me out. This is the amazing, stupid part that really amazes me. I haven't seen a judge, but they sent me to give me this paperwork. It's in my bag. It's in my bag with my clothes. Instructions for relating to preliminary initial appearance. It says that I went to court on the procurement of trespass on the, where is it? Ninth of uh, November. I've never been to court. They didn't, um, uh, no judge gave me this paperwork, sent it, that, um, they had read me my rights and asked me did I have, uh, um, what they say, uh, that they would give me a, a attorney. This judge here, Lisa, let me see, what, what's the name? Since they messing with the pixels. Lisa, is that B-R-O-N-C-H-E-T-T-I. This judge never saw me. I never, saying, I went to court at 10.04 a.m. on November 9th. I've never been in the courtroom. And you know, when they give you this paperwork, saying, do you know your rights? You're supposed to sign for it. They haven't given me no paperwork showing that I signed for any of this paperwork. So they sneakily stuck it in my bag to say that I went to court on the night. I've never been before a judge. You understand that? So they call themselves covering their butts by saying that I went before a judge. And my bond was set at $500. I've never signed for any of this. I've never seen this paperwork until yesterday. I have no police reports, no police uh, records, nothing. Just this paperwork stuck in my bag with my clothes when I leave, saying that I had seen a judge November the 9th, and she read me my constitutional rights, which is a lie. And they cannot produce any paperwork with my signature on it, saying that I received this paperwork. Um, another thing I want to go over. Now, when I put up my money, I had $371.79. Now, on their, um, MA handbook, it said that when you leave their jail, you get your money back. They gave me a debit card. A debit card. Instead of cash. So I had to spend $5 to withdraw my money. Off the debit card, plus my whole three hundred and seventy one dollars was not there. So that means Monday, I'm gonna have to go and ask them what happened to the money that was supposed to be in on my debit card. These things are truly retarded. Here they charge me. I had to take out two hundred dollars at a time, and they charged me two fifty. I took out one sixty and two hundred. So two fifty, two fifty. They charge me five dollars to take out three sixty, and the rest of the money is gone. Only a dollar with something left out of the uh, three seventy one seventy nine. So how do they force you to take a debit card for cash you gave them, and they take the money off your card? They get all that money back. This racket is so set up. It is so. Now this is why I have to go Monday. To find out where my property is. Where is my property? So you know I'll be there. But uh. 
the place is so is so uh, horrible. You can't believe the human rights violations that's going on in that Dallas, uh, Texas correctional center. And it was not just only me. They had these women and me locked up for all that period of time, isolated, 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day in no cells with no clothes. The air conditioning is on. They give you this tissue paper gown, which as soon as you touch it, it tears apart. So here I am, totally nude, uh, taking pieces of that gown to put, cover myself from, to keep from freezing for three days. And the only way they say I could get, um, a uniform, the MA uniform, is if I talk to the psychiatrist. So if I refuse to talk to the psychiatrist, they would not give me a uniform or a blanket or a towel or a sheet. So here I'm la- I am laying up in this cold room with no sheet, no blanket, no towel, nothing but covering myself up with pieces of that paper. Now me and I come in back and forth on those units and all these women are undressed in one form or another because they would not give them clothes. Uh, it, it, it is, it is so much that happened. Most people don't realize how these things have had to have this evil system set up where they are just abusing people, violating their civil rights, their human rights. And one, um, uh, uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Depp, which I'll call him, kept telling one lady, uh, this is what she was saying. If you don't talk, uh, no clothes for you, bitch. What doctor would tell anyone in a, on any board that if you don't talk, no clothes for you, bitch? It, 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 the, the way that they keep these women stored in these things, I don't know what's going on. I don't know everything that's going on, but these, uh, violations are truly against the law. They would not uh, let us communicate with each other. Uh, the food was as minimal as you can get. And then up until yesterday, they started, got to the point where they would not feed me. They would not, when I first got there, they were giving me an extra sandwich because it, you need, uh, extra food because they, they don't, they don't give you that much. Then when I filed grievances, they stopped giving me that extra food. They keep these women where the lights, these bright lights are on them 24 hours a day. It's a place of sensory deprivation where they have control of your mind because with being locked up 24 hours a day, no TV, no radio, nowhere you can see whether it's night or day. You, you can't see outside. You, it, you, you can't tell whether it's night or day. You, you can't tell what time of day it is. It's total sensory deprivation. Isolation and deprivation. Now, this is supposed to be a unit for people who, who want to commit suicide. So, people who want to commit suicide already feel isolated. So, why would you put them in a war where you isolate them even further? Where you don't let them have no human contact? Where you're in a cell with bright lights on you 24 hours a day? No TV, no way to tell day or night. Um, I think that's all I want to talk about now, but this, this system has to change. God is in the, in the, in the works because I think he has me seeing all this stuff. Nobody could believe how this system is so evil, especially in Dallas, Texas. Especially in Dallas, Texas. Now, I think the evil is all across the world. But some spots is just more evil than others. Well, I'm going to try to upload this. 
And uh, I'll make sure I'm back at that court Monday because I said they'll probably think because they let me out without telling me, me never going before a judge, that I'll leave town and then they can put a warrant saying that somebody bombed me out and I skipped on bond or something. So I have to stay here until I find out what happened in that courtroom and get some paperwork to find out where I'm supposed to be. All right, guys. Um, be informed, be aware, be prepared. God is still in the mix. And uh, one of the comments that was made saying that I'm trying to expose a lot of stuff at one time. Of course I am. Of course I am. Because people have to know how far this evil reaches. That it pervades every part of our society. Everything that I reached out and touched bit my hand. And the only way I can show people what's going on is to put it out there so they can see. Because my phone is still not charging. It's still not charging. It's still not charging. Well, I love you guys. Be blessed. Be informed. Be aware. And beware of those police cars. Since it's definitely that they're killing people in the back of them vehicles. Alright guys. Love you. Bye bye.